This is the Chris Abraham Show. Hey there, this is the Chris, Chris Abraham Show, Season uh, 5, Episode 40. And this one is completely an answer of my sweet post-college girlfriend, Stephanie. She emailed me and uh, said we haven't chatted in a while. And um, I can tell I was madly in love with her, even though I didn't behave that way towards the end. Uh, Because, I don't know, fear of commitment, thinking I was too young, not knowing. I don't know. I was... What might have been. I probably should, based on how I felt about her, I should have committed to her. Um, But she got married. She had a daughter. Like, everything turned out right. But I can tell I was madly in love with her because when I go back to chrisabraham.com slash lit, I find loads of poems about uh, about my life with Stephanie. And even though... Um, yeah, so... So anyway, she asked me, She said she does Pilates Reformer, which made me think of the amazing novel Pattern Recognition, where the main character is the coolest woman in the entire world, besides Stephanie, of course. And she does all of her exercise uh, in Pilates with the Pilates Reformer. So the most, I mean, there's a, I can, every time I walk past the Pilates studio here, I see the Pilates reformers. They look like torture devices and they're like all springs and vinyl and wood. Like it's so old school looking, but whenever I see them now, I'll think of, of Stephanie, but, uh, I always thought of, uh, of blue ant agency and pattern recognition. It's one of my favorite novels. Anyway, to answer her question, why I walk around with such a heavy pack, this episode brought to you by Stephanie. Stephanie, the girl I probably should have married if I didn't have my head up my ass and if she would have had me after all was said and done. Stephanie, this episode brought to you by Stephanie. Um, the reason, I don't know if I've explained this anywhere else, but the reason why I'm currently walking around with a GORUCK GR1 26 liter with a cast iron 30 pound go ruck plate in it plus everything else which generally weighs about 53 to 55 pounds or 24 to 25 kilos um 24 kilos is because i need to prove myself that i'm not broken um even though i've lost 53 pounds the first reason why the most obvious reason why i'm carrying 53 pounds is because I've lost 55 pounds, and I think that if I keep that missing weight on my body, it'll remind me how much I weighed, because 50 pounds in my head when I have 75 pounds to lose uh, just doesn't seem like a lot of weight. But when I put it on my back, it is a lot of weight, like 50 pounds, 55 pounds is no joke. So first of all, it's to remind me of the weight I've lost, which is a third of a Mark Harrison and half, uh, half of a Stephanie. And, um, and secondly, it's to remind me, um, that I'm not, I'm no longer broken. Like I feel like since I had that heart failure, uh, in 2017, And ever since I died for three minutes and ever since I became obese and was pre-diabetes and then touched into diabetes and I had the problem with with atrial fibrillation 
and AFib and going into AFib and all these other things, I feel like I've been broken. I feel like I got broke in 2017. So the fact that I can endlessly walk in 104 degree heat and uh, carry uh, 24 kilograms in my backpack everywhere and then still uh, not fall asleep like the moment I get home or not need to take a uh, not need to take a break or not need to you know uh, take a uh, you know an afternoon nap or any other type of sickly thing that I found myself endlessly doing when I was you know uh, recovering I mean it was a big recovery Mark came to get me along with um, I think and Harrington Haas and um, and they took me down to I don't know a park along the Potomac they took me on to a park along the Potomac and um, and I could only walk frick I could only walk 100 feet not even 100 yards like I would, and I remember even during my 14 to 25,000 step walks where I was like, I was logging all the steps, but I was, even without this heavy weight, I was stopping and sitting at bus stop after bus stop after bus stop, right? So, I mean, even though I could spend the whole day out, I was spending a lot of time, even without all this weight on my back, I was spending a lot of time stopping at uh, at the benches associated with 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 bus stops i mean i could make excuses that i wanted to kind of look at my inbox i can make all these excuses but the truth is is like i didn't have the ability to do an entire seven mile walk without doing a lot of stopping and Not even drinking. It wasn't even like to stop to get a quick drink. It was literally, um, I need to walk, uh, I needed to walk from my apartment along Columbia Pike towards the Pentagon and I needed to walk and then I needed to stop uh, on a bus bench and then I needed to walk and I needed to stop on the the wall there. Um, is it Henderson Road? Anyway, the road right there. When you're going towards Columbia Pike, um, behind the Air Force Memorial, there's a bunch, there's a wall and a, and a, and a fence that separates from the, um, the, uh, the National Cemetery. And I would stop there and I would say it was just to check my email. And then I would go on to the, uh, get down to Pentagon and I would stop on one of those stone benches. And then I would go and I would stop at one of those, uh, even further towards the Potomac, I would stop at one of those uh, bus um, uh, kiosks. And then I would walk and I would stop um, at another bus stop. Like it was really um, walk, stop, walk, stop, walk, stop. And I just couldn't, I couldn't. Be it uh, 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 knees or or tired or, or just, you know, and now I can literally do, I never take daytime naps. I never uh, drink plenty of water. I drink coffee. That's it. Um, and like, I mean, you know, I'm not, knock on wood, I'm not popping into AFib. I don't drink anymore. I try not to overeat. Um, I do a lot of walking. I drink a lot of hydration salts with my lots of water. But like when I do one of those long walks, I keep walking and walking and walking and walking and walking and walking. And And if I really, I, and I only stop when I really want to check my phone. I'm not the kind of guy who likes walking and checking his phone at the same time. I've got 50 pounds on me and if I go down, it's not going to be nice. So... So that's one of the answers. Like one of the biggest answers is I want to prove to myself that I'm not broken, that I'm not fragile, that I'm not old, 
53 is the new 33, right? I mean, all of my friends are 50-something, 40-something, like even 60-something, and that's not old yet. I've got another 10 years of vigorousness, um, another 20 years of vigorousness. So doing this until I start running, and once I start running and slow jogging, like four to five to eight miles a day, even if it's super slow, I will put that to rest that I'm durable, that I'm not fragile, that I'm vigorous and rigorous and tough and so forth. So, so that's the long and the short of it. Um, you know, I, it was really nice to hear from Stephanie. Um, yeah. The last time we really chatted on chat, uh, she had all these questions for me. And I feel like I finally put the entire, like, all the questions that she had to bed when I said the following on chat. On, and I said to her, I said, you dodged a bullet. And, like, I'm so glad she reached out to me again today with a, with a hello. But, like, I felt like after that she disappeared for a while. And I feel like finally I was able to find the word that gave her peace um she dodged a bullet she has a beautiful life she's an international traveler she's lived in australia she's got a beautiful daughter she's still um physical and she um, does pilates and does a lot of i'm sure she doesn't even include all the walking and traveling she does into her fitness routine like real people. Real people don't count steps. Real people do their athletic life. And then they only count like the classes they go to or the, the runs they do. Like anything that results in time on Strava is an actual workout. Like just wandering around your neighborhood or taking a, a constitutional or being active or, or like scampering from... Uh, airport gate to airport gate is not included. That's just an active lifestyle. When you go in and set up your Fitbit or your Strava or your Garmin um, account or your uh, MyFitnessPal account, they ask, or your uh, Zero or whatever account, they ask you how active you are, whether you're sedentary or an active lifestyle or whatnot. And I, I dare say, I bet Stephanie is an active person. When I talked to Chuck at the, uh, the Masonic barbecue last week, I said to him, you're, when you wake up in the morning, you're like, how am I going to play like a puppy dog? How am I going to be kinetic? How am I going to find time from in my day for my walkies? For me, it's since sloth is my major venal sin. Um, my, my general day is finding excuses not to, right? Like, in general, I've been walking lately when I do these recordings, but I'm just sitting on a bench in Penrose Square, and I, you, I'm using the excuse that it's extremely windy and loud out on the Columbia Pike Road, so I'm going to try to defeat the wind noises by sitting here. And plus, my cardiologist told me to get lots of sun um, so that it can help me in my vitamin D and my general, uh, the happiness of my brain when it comes to uh, the, my diurnal uh, and not nocturnal, my diurnal lifestyle. And so I don't have my hat on. I don't have my glasses on. I haven't taken my shirt off. As you all know, underneath my clothing, I wear a rowing singlet. Go ahead and search it, a rowing singlet. And on days that I'm bicycling and I want to have pa a chamois pad between my, uh, between my legs and in front of my gonads, I have what's called a cyclist bib. And I always have something underneath my shirt. And it's not because of the amazing slimming effects. It's because I'm still, I still have a belly. And I'm working on it. I'm 75 pounds from being a stud. Now I'm just a dud. And I hate when I see people lifting their arms and their t-shirt rises. And you, I don't mind 
all y'all show your under boob and your side boob and your décolletage and your and your um, your uh, your cleavage, but I do not. And and you know, camel toe, whatever. Like wear totally tight leggings. You go. The only thing I don't like is underbelly. I don't want to see anybody's underbelly. So as a result, I lead by example. And I wear boathouse.com, jlracing.com, or um, uh, pearly zoomy under things. I literally am exactly like a, a Mormon girl with like... Uh, the special Mormon under things, except my Mormon under things are rowing and cycling kit so as to prevent you from seeing my underbelly and also to prevent uh, uh, thigh rubbing, uh, chub rub as they call it, and to avoid um, that kind of awfulness. And also, it's it is slimming. It is slimming. It stops from that. It, it's like um, it's like a uh, Manx. It's like a full body men's shapewear. So every night, every morning when I go take a shower, I bring it in with me and I use it literally to soap up my body with my Dawn dishwashing liquid, and then my uh, my um, my unisuit and I take a shower together we soap up together we rinse off together and then i i rinse it rinse it rinse it and put it over the shower bar uh the curtain bar and periodically i throw them all into my hamper so that uh columbia pike laundry can do them for me so yeah so that's what's going on um Stephanie, I want you to know that I really did love you. I meant, I mean, um, I, the only excuse I make is that at least, uh, at least David Cohen found Roshana Light. Uh, and they're still together and they seem to be as madly in love as they've always been. And uh, I'm reminded of you every time I see them and every time they take me to Thanksgiving and and every time I read of my bad poetry and a good majority of them are about you from my romantic period. And um, did I ever tell you the story about how my high school girlfriend, Georgina, completely wigged out when she realized that uh, I hadn't written any poetry about her? Um If she would have stopped being angry at me about it, I would have told her that I hadn't discovered poetry and my voice then um so wasn't until i met uh liz humphreys in uh in england when i you know started to feel those feelings that would compel me to write poetry uh before then i just didn't have a voice and even now i don't know like the only women i've ever written poetry for I don't know, maybe that was just a time in my life. And I never meant that poetry to be seductive. Like, I never wrote it for the woman, for the girl. Never really shared it with her. Like, it wasn't a delivery. It was just uh, an expression. Because I know my buddy Mark Harrison, he never wrote poetry unless it was to seduce someone or to play with language. For me, it was neither of those things. I mean, there was assonance and alliteration, but uh, basically it's just super earnest, nerd boy, emo poems of heart vomit. So, so I don't know. I don't know what to say. Uh, you can't go, what is it called? You can't go home again or you... Anyway, I love all y'all. I love you, Stephanie. I've always loved you, and I've never felt badly. I felt badly about my my behavior, but I never, ever hated you. Um, I definitely, like, 
I don't know. I don't know what to say. It, uh, it is surely a regret. The regret is not having been with you. The regret is how it ended, how I did it, the cowardliness of it, the not showing you the, the amount of respect you, you deserved, the communication, the directness, the transparency. I sometimes get to a point where I forget that my ally is my, I forget that my adversary is actually my ally and I mistake my ally and the person I love as an adversary and I get paranoid and I get angry and I get resentful and like everybody we hurt the people who we love the most. So I want you to know that's how I feel and I never regretted being with you but I every day I regret the way I ended it and the way I let it go and the way I didn't give you what you needed and the way I didn't meet you halfway and the way I just disappeared I think I did the equivalent of ghosting you and we had been together and lived together and we had used uh, Unix talk together and we had discovered the internet together and I visit you at Clark and it was and I re visited you and your mom and your sister in Pawkatuck and I visited uh, your town and your home and and like it just wasn't cool like we were we were related we became we became not only you know boyfriend girlfriend but we were like best friends like there was nothing about you I didn't like. Like, we would go, um, I remember the blonde little hairs on your tan little legs. I remember uh, you reminding me that your hair was honey colored and that you have hazel eyes, I believe. Um, I remember going out to, um, going out to farmer's market and you would put on a sundress and absolutely nothing else, and it was our little secret. I remember those horrible Tevas that you wore on your cute little feet, and like, I just, that was a war I didn't want to fight. I hated Tevas, but it was basically my, my memory of you is honey-colored hair, blonde little leg hairs, uh, flowered summer dresses with nothing underneath. I remember hazel eyes, I remember um, I remember ugly Tevas that you loved. I remember the picnic basket that you loved so much that you would refuse to give it to me in our divorce. Even when I literally sent Mark and someone else, uh, Lee, maybe Lee Garbowska, Garbowski to go fetch it. You're like, forget that at, um, what was it? Uh, Population Action International. God, those were the days, crazy days. I remember being at the house in Potomac, uh, Potomac, uh, Pentagon City. I remember being there and I remember uh, you drop, you just doing a drop by. Uh, were you doing a jog? I don't know if that was completely like, um, I don't know if you drove there and just like, you know, walked uh, the 10 feet to my door saying you had jogged. But I thought it was adorable, and you were very a very cute jogger, and it made me sad to think that you felt like you had to put on little girl voice for me because honestly, when I first met you, I thought it was awesome that you were a Clark. I think I I learned so much about you. I learned all about NIMBY. I learned all about population and population action. I learned about uh, population growth. I learned about. Um, uh, uh, the entire, like my first like liberal activist social justice warrior in my entire life was you. You were my first, maybe my only real social justice warrior, um, at least when it came to eco, my favorite little eco terrorist who wasn't a terrorist, my favorite little eco warrior, my favorite little um, population action goddess. So like... You never needed to make yourself smaller. Like, I I loved the smart girl. I loved the Clark girl. I loved the 
intellectual girl. I loved the reader. I loved the girl who would jump on Unix for me and the internet. Like, I, I love the way you said Tuesday and all those other things. But to find out that it was all an act just for me, it still makes me happy that you would do that for me. But it was not an act that you needed to do to make me attracted to you, right? That was... Once I recognized you, you know, you were that tiny little girl right after college when I was with, um, with Mark and Hanu. Did you know, if, if Michelle is listening, uh, sorry, if Stephanie is listening to this, did you know that Hanu, the guy that was there when we met, did you know that he passed away? Uh, it must be 10 years by now. Um, I'm, I'm still friends with his wife on Facebook, but we don't keep in touch. Um, he died of cancer. Like, that's a guy who shouldn't have passed away. Like, if I could have traded, I totally would have traded with him. Um... Anyway, took took a bunch of flybys for you to get my attention because you are, you know, five feet tall. But once you did, you had my attention. You had my attention. Um, I didn't mean this to become a love letter, but apparently I don't mean any of my podcasts. So I really feel embarrassed for myself and not embarrassed for you, Stephanie. I didn't give that much information and honestly the people who already know who Stephanie is already know who Stephanie is and have heard all these stories I love you I hope you're well thanks for reaching out to me again and I hope we continue staying in touch Um, you're very skeptical of me you don't tell me where you live or if you're married or anything about your family or anything about your story you misdirect you misinform I don't know your married name. I don't know your real profiles. You only maintain a Stephanie profile for me and maybe some people from college. And honestly, I'm pretty sure you're a spook. You know, you're probably like spending most of your time in a, uh, you know, in a, uh, in a Polish black site, uh, um, interrogating uh, terrorists and white supremacists and Russian uh, Russian uh, criminals, Russian um, war criminals. But I do know that you and Mark probably did see each other at a an airport in North Africa or whatever. So you're living a jet set life. You're living a cosmopolitan life. You're living a wallpaper asterisk life. You are living la vida loca you are a global citizen and you have an australian accent even though you're from connecticut and i think that's awesome so you go girl good on ya good on ya and uh a prawn on the bobby for ya uh shrimp on the bobby for ya anyway sorry to offend you uh, love you. Talk to you soon. Talk to all you guys. Let's make, let's give me a hundred followers, a hundred subscribers so I can finally monetize this bad boy. And I'll talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for listening to The Chris Abraham Show. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future episodes. Until next time.